and we are live. All right, um, we're back with more eyes over us. This time we're actually gonna try and, you know, accomplish something. I did accomplish something before, but then the game crashed as I was getting the ending. And yeah, so I'm having to re-record this. Hooray. So, continuing with the adventures of Giroge and Karen. So, I kind of know what I'm supposed to actually do now. I'm supposed to, like, sync up their emotions. Uh, the mass ones are opening the hatch and lowering something with the crane. Once the crane's platform lowered to the ground level, a loud voice instructed them to look inside. There are several objects placed without evident criteria. Point purse, a portable radio, a robot toy, and a xerotrope. I wonder, what should I do now? Hmm. So I kind of learn um, how how everything works. It's like you can't use the same emotion twice in a row. Um, let's inflict. Uh, should I try and go with might be easier to get Karen depressed. Yeah, let's try and get... Yeah, depression. Karen's eyes start drifting, examining her own body. She has been so preoccupied with survival that she hasn't had time for examining herself. When she arrived, she had long and beautiful sculpted nails painted with nerd motives that made the nail salon girl expend an extra hour making sure to she painted them right. Her best friend had convinced her to give this look a chance. She had never been much of the typical feminine type, but she liked these nails. They made her feel pretty. She had fun with those nails, even without being able to dominate the domestic chores as well as before. She eventually got used to them and went to the nail salon once a month with her friend. Her last designs were a black and red poker inspired cards that remind her of the Queen of Hearts, her favorite character of her favorite book. Those nails, however, were completely destroyed now. The black was only dirt and the red only dry blood. Most of the nails were broken or straight up tear up. She tried to distract herself, playing with her hair that was equally or even more dirty than her nails. Tears dropping even with her trying to get a hold of herself to not break down in front of Guy Rogue, or even worse in her eyes giving satisfaction to the masked ones. Karen holds the portable radio in her hands and inspects it. The first thing she notices is that it has no batteries so it will be pretty useless, but besides that, the object looks oddly identical to the one she used to carry with her to and back from school when she was little. Her school was a little bit far away and her father worked late, so the object provided a useful distraction on the bus and when walking to and from the bus stop. All sorts of older and shady men used to roam the streets near her house, often coming in or out of the bar that presided the street corner. The radio was useful to drown out their comments, probably not of which they should be spattering to a little girl. But sometimes the radio cancelled the sounds of steps until it was almost too late and the men were right behind her. Sometimes they touched her hair, her back, or whispered in her ear. At that point, she just sprinted out of there while hearing the sounds of laughter. She remembered those meters until she got home and the Daily Tailor, and how the radio and headphones helped her maintain the illusion of safety even if that was often shattered easily. Giroge watched her starting staring at the contraption for a while until he could not bear it any longer and offered her to keep the radio. She accepts. Although the object reminds her of a terrifying time in her life, she held it firmly in her hands for an unknown reason. They put the rest of the objects in the crane's platform and watched them quickly elevate far from reach. The object doesn't seem to be of in any utility in their minds, but that is not true on the masked one's side. 
they got valuable data from this and we'll have even more soon. There is movement on top of the hole. The masked ones are sealing all the places where air could come out. This is bound to get interesting. They are pumping some sort of gas in. This ones are not noticing it. The gas is almost transparent, but they can notice it slowly descending over them. I can sense the de fear descending over them as well. I wonder, what should I do now? Oh, we might be able to get him to hope, because this is the gas one. No fear to your head, no place to hide, no help on the way, no hope to cling to. Only logical to be afraid. The only option, it's surrendering to fear. Karen is filled with fear. She pressured herself against the wall, trying to avoid the descending substance. Hiroge panics. He runs around the hole, trying to get away from the gas. But it soon fills the entirety of the vertical cave. Hiroge starts chuckling and then starts laughing maniacally. Confusion, fear, and of course laughter mix in a glorious cacophony. Karen soon follows him. The gas stops flowing, the ventilation system activates, and the gas is drained from the hole. The masked ones analyze the results. This will not be the last time something like this happens. Geiroge notes a change in the movement of the masked ones, probably the start of another of their tests. Soon the crane's platform descends, this time carrying two human figures. As the platform descends, Giroge notices more detail about them. Taller figure is outfitted with heavy armor. He recognizes the rifle as an A545. He remembered reading an article about it in a magazine he bought from a gas station not long ago. The type of magazine that had equal parts guns, hunting and fishing equipment, and female anatomy display. The tall masked one jumps out of the platform before it reaches the ground, surprisingly agile for all the equipment he is carrying. The figure points the gun at them with an electronically amplified voice, orders them to step aside and keep their distance. As the gun points at his face, he starts examining it, remembering the details read on the magazine. Iron sights that consist of a rotary rear drum, aperture, and a hooded front post creating a significantly longer sight line. An ambidextrous fire mode selector safety lever is especially useful for this soldier since it seems he would have his left handed, retractable and adjustable shoulder stock now in an extended position. The Warsaw Pack side rail bracket from previous models is placed by a Pictonini rail on a redesigned receiver top for mounting auxiliary equipment such as the optical red dot sights that are currently sitting there. You're really going to read all of that? Yeah. I just fucking did. Again. Twice. Because I'm re-recording this. All this information dump is boring me. How this man manages to retain all of this really specific information is almost beyond my comprehension. The second figure has already descended off the platform as I regain my interest. Karen notices the distinct medical clothes that the masked one is wearing. No armor in sight, only a side pistol. She is not able to identify the model. She never had any interest in guns. In her eyes, a gun is a gun. All of them will kill you if the user shoots you. That was enough knowledge. Giroge, of course, notices that the pistol was a 9x18mm Makarov. Gears in his head start turning. Both guns are used by the Russian Millet Army. Uh, standard equipment. Were they in a Russian installation? Security was Russian. Maybe a PM. Or was the Russian state involved in this? Were they moved by plane while they were unconscious? If that is correct, the possibility of being found or escape started to be even more remote. I wonder, what should I do now? Uh, well, we're currently... Already in a good spot. So let's try amplifying fear. Because, like, one of them are going to get desynced from their thing. And then I'm going to have to probably, hopefully, be able to get Karen right back into it. Doctor starts examining them. 
Karen is the first patient. She is surprised by the care the doctor has while cleaning her wounds and suturing the cuts. The doctor works really fast, and in no time, he is already tending to Hiroge's wounds. The doctor asks questions about their mood as they are being examined. This feels like a joke. They are being kept prisoners and tortured, and then asks how they feel about it. The doctor gives them some pills and a couple of injections to avoid tetanus, they assume. They decide to trust in them for now, not that they have much of a choice while they are being pointed at by guns. The doctor gets back to the platform, followed by the tall one, and they both start sending, ascending once again. Gi, Roge, and Karen feel conflicted by the experience. They much rather the mass ones to be tending to their wounds instead of causing them. The masked ones write down the results and start preparing the next experiment. Look at this image! What emotion comes to mind? Uh, the, 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 the. shit. Huh, anger? What word comes to mind? Ah, creepy. That is truly an anger-inducing creepy. <laughs> Garen starts trying to sleep, but it was suddenly awakened by the sound of the radio static. The static was faint, however, started growing steadily. Karen turned the device around, and as she remembered, there was no batteries there. The static kept increasing in intensity, but that was not all. Karen noticed a trail-like footsteps forming towards her. As the footsteps got closer, the static grew. She started to get increasingly scared as the trail got closer and closer to her. Karen ran towards Giroge and remained there for a moment. The radio static became fainter and then silence as the trail walked in the opposite direction. Giroge's confusion was visible. Karen tried her best to explain, but as Giroge told her, he didn't hear no static. Karen got back to her corner of the hole and remained silent for a while. There is movement on top, on the top of the hole. The masked ones are sitting all the places where air could come out. There is, is bound to get interesting. They are pumping some sort of gas in. This ones are noticing it. The gas is almost transparent, but they can notice it slowly descending over them. I can sense their fear descending over them as well. I wonder, what should I do now? I can inflict fear on her. I cannot inflict... Uh, da, 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 expand influence. I cannot expand fear. Affect Karen's mind. Fear. Karen's mind is invaded by the images of the ones who are that are no longer with them. She remembered another girl that was with them at first. She didn't last long. She was taken upstairs. After a while, when she finally returned, she was a beacon of fear for everyone inside the hole. She seemed to be completely paralyzed. She didn't respond when touched or seemed to be able to see or hear. She was breathing, and that was the only indication that she was not a corpse. She was unable to eat even when they tried to feed her. After a few days, they removed her from the hole. Karen had a long-lasting fear of being trapped in her own body. She always thought that this was a fantasy fear. The indulgence of the mind over a ridiculous idea. This is what this place was for her. A place where fears that belonged in fantasy became flesh and blood. Karen is filled with fear. She pressed herself against the walls, trying to avoid the descending substance. Giroge panics. He runs around the hole, trying to get away from the gas. <laughs> Just run away from the gas! But it soon fills the entirety of the vertical cave. The substance numbs their senses, senses affecting their minds. Restrain is no longer an option for them, and their emotions overwhelm them. The gas stops flowing. The ventilation system activates and the gas is drained from the hole. They know some damage was done, but they are alive for now. The masked ones analyze the results. 
This will not be the last time something like this happens. Look at this image. What emotion comes to mind when you look at this? Hmm. Anger. What word comes to mind? I don't know, I'm fucking stupid, so just nothing comes to mind, because my brain... MY BRAIN IS EMPTY! <laughs> oh. What is that? It's like, micro... It's like... Uh, the, the, the microorganisms. Microorganism. Fuck you, anger-inducing anger microorganism. You seem to be filled with anger lately. I had an appropriate gift then, but only this time. Manipulating the system. Giroge is greatly tired. He prays the masked ones will let them sleep. Karen can barely keep her eyes open. She just wants to sleep. The top of the holes gets sealed by the masked ones. Soon gas starts to pour in from the ventilation system. I wonder, what should I do now? Can we get him with fear? No. No. Expand influence. No. Like they're they're in sync right now, so I don't exactly want the. Uh... Oh shit! Uh, she has always prided herself in being an independent, a sort of woman that took shit from no one. Here, that meant a rude awakening for her. The masked ones push her around since the moment she arrived. They were tough military types, and she didn't respond well to threats. They tried to measure. She tried to measure against them withstanding the first kicks and punches, eventually realized that they were not going to back down. They had no reason to do so. She had to give up. Apologies swallow all of her pride, pride and Borderland begs them to stop. Her body was hurt, but her pride was the thing that hurt the most. She knew that from here on now, she would have to measure her words and just accept the abuse. Anger was all she could feel right now, and not even the pain distracts her. RSX. Giroge panics. He runs around the hole, trying to get away from the gas. But it soon fills all the hole. Soon it reached him and starts working his chemical signs. The gas overly stimulates his senses. Hours pass and he is still hyper aware of his surroundings. Details obsess him, each texture inside the artificial vertical cave. He can sense the chemical making of everything around him. I can see everything! The, the, the chemical makeups, man! I can see them! Karen is filled with fear. She presses herself against the wall, trying to avoid the descending substance. She tries to cover her mouth and nose with her hands, but the gas eventually gets to her lungs. The substance reaches her nervous system and activates all her receptors. Information overwhelms her senses like an avalanche. She has been in this state for hours, maybe days. Time seems meaningless right now. Giroge and Karen stand face to face. The masked one's curious about what's going to happen next. Karen starts screaming in a continuous manner and with a really high pitch. Geruge imitates her with a lower pitch, but an equally continuous emission. After a while, they are both mute, but they continue to open their mouths, trying to continue with the scream. Several hours pass until they both fall to the ground, unconscious. Some damage has no doubt been made. The gas stops flowing. The ventilation system activates, and the gas is drained from the hole. The masked ones analyze the results. This will not be the last time something like this happens. The test subjects survived seven experiments. It's a shame the cycle is over. God damn it.
What the fuck? The one time I actually get a goddamn... ending and the game has to fucking crash on me. Let's start again. This one's opening the hatch. What's the crane's platform lower to the ground? Blah 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 blah. Separate objects. Coin purse, portable radio, robot toy, and a Zorotrop. I wonder what should I do now? Hmm. problem with getting various endings is there's a random nature to how the story unfolds. Oh, let's try getting some hope going. She's like a monk now trying to meditate. She starts laughing at the idea. Garogi looks at her and can't avoid laughing a little as well. She tries to let the stress go. She always had been a person that managed to make herself feel happy in an easy way. The situation was certainly testing her, but for now she felt like she could get on top of it. Karen pays special attention to the zoetrope. This seems to be in good condition. After a quick examination, she checks that it, in fact, works. Although the darkness in the hole makes almost impossible to see inside the contraption, she manages to make it work and for a second enjoy whatever illusions are fabricated inside. She remembers the first time she saw a zoetrope work, it was on a children's show. They usually made quick segments teaching kids things before numbing their minds with simple cartoons. Karen holds the memories in dear esteem. A simpler time where, she, where she had no obligations, being happy was easy, more importantly, it was enough. She shares the experience with Giroge, who is not as excited, but seeing Karen's face and the fact that it doesn't feel strongly about any of the other objects finally budge and accepts the zoetrope as their choice. They put the rest of the objects in the crane's platform and watch them quickly elevate far from reach. The object doesn't seem to be of any utility in their mind, but this is not true on the mast one's side. They got valuable data from this and will have even more soon. The mast ones seem to be getting ready for another experiment. Noise inside the stone walls of the hole let Giroge and Karen know to get ready for anything. Hidden holes in the walls open up. Water starts to pour in from the holes. The sounds indicate that it is about to carry something else with it. I wonder, what should I do now? Uh, let's try and get them synced on hope, I guess. Nope. Oh. Finally, whatever was on those tubes comes out. Myriad of small slugs, Uzumaki, <laughs> pour out of the holes being dragged by the water current. Karen got pale all of the sudden. Slugs have always been a phobia of her since she was recommended a nice lecture material called Uzumaki. Karen notices the bright color of the slugs. She remembers some warning of the tourist guide about this animal in one of the few vacations that she took. This is a kind of aquatic slug that is no doubt venomous. Karen screamed for Giroge's help while the small creatures slowly approach her. Giroge grabs some stones and tries to get rid of the slugs that are closer to Karen. They are really slow, so Giroge manages to take them out easily. The rest just return to the holes in the wall after some time. Karen feels a much safer and greatly appreciates Giroge's helps. The masked ones take notes and prepare for the next test. There is movement on top of the hole. The masked ones are opening the hatch and lowering something with the crane. Once the crane's platform is low to the ground, a light voice instructs them to take what's inside. A carefully wrapped package sits on top of the platform. The package seems to contain a good amount of meat, already cooked and ready to eat. Not looking bad, judging by their reaction, the masked ones put, point the guns at them, indicating them to hurry up. 
I wonder what should I do now? Uh, hope. Kyogi had his eyes wide open, but he was daydreaming. He had always been creative, not impressed by his own standard, but apparently for other people it was. He started to think how good of an opportunity this was for creative thought. How good of a story this was. If he could get out of here, he could become a celebrity. He could already picture how he would tell the story. This fantasy gave him hope not only to survive, but to eventually thrive. Girogi is the first one to eat the mystery meat. He is just happy to have food that doesn't look like trash. Karen takes the cooked meat in her hands. It's still warm. She misses freshly cooked foods. She doesn't think too much about it and just enjoys it. It's the end. It's again. The loud voice starts to talk while the masked ones watch the reaction. The loud voice informs them that they just ate human meat. Some of it was from the people they met before. They feel like vomiting even try to, but their bodies retain the valuable components nonetheless. Moral quandaries have no place in star the starving flesh machine. Their minds, however, are filled with sorrow once again. The masked ones feel satisfied and prepare for another test. Garen was sitting on the ground, slowly turning the zero trope by hand. After a while, she got bored and abandoned seeing it, focusing on something else. It's easy to lose track of thought inside the hole. On the corner of her eye, Karen saw movement. The contraption started to rotate on its own, first slowly, but then really fast. The shapes inside of it becoming alive. Suddenly, a light appears inside of it, where a light bulb would normally be. The light started to project on the walls of the hole, creating shapes that trapped Karen's attention and made it impossible to look away. Her mind transported to a different place inside those shapes. Memories of happier times became solid right before her eyes. She was a child once more, happy again. Her body lifted in the air while the beacon continued to project light and spiral motions. Blood secreted out of Karen's nose, ears, mouth, and eyes. Her fingers on hands and feet twisting on unnatural motions. Contrary to her exterior inside, she was invaded only by happy thoughts, product of the memories and visions that she was now inhabiting. Karen was awoken by Gurugi shaking her violently, trying to wake her up from her stupor. She noticed the blood and pain of returning to the real world, and it was met with even more disappointment, seeing that the machine had now turned off. She would come back to that place. She just had to wait. Rising hope. Girogi notes a change in the movement of the masked ones. Probably the start of another of their tests. Soon the crane's platform descends, this time carrying two human figures. As the platform descends, Girogi notices that the figures appear to be the same they encountered before. The tall armored guy and the smaller doctor. The tall figure indicates that one's more to step aside and keep their distance while the doctor steps out of the platform. I wonder what should I do now? And I can't expand. Yeah, uh... Look, Sorrow. Sorrow is like a river that slowly carves the mounting of the mind until it crumbles. My influence like water will always fail in the end because I have the time to do so. Doctor starts examining them. Karen is the first patient. She is surprised by the care the doctor has while cleaning her wounds and suturing the cuts. The doctor works really fast and in no time he is already tending to Gurirogi's wounds. The doctor asks questions about their mood as they are being examined. This feels like a joke. They are being kept prisoners and tortured and then asked how they feel about it. The doctor gives them some pills and a couple of injections. To avoid tetanus they assume, they decide to trust them for now. Not that they have much choice while they are being pointed by guns. The doctor even gave them some pills to recover some of the lost sleep. They are not sleeping pills though. They felt energized and hyperactive the second they took it. They think that it is better not to think what they were. At least they are no longer tired. The doctor gets back up to the platform followed by the tall one. And they both start ascending once again. Hiroge and Karen feel conflicted by the experience. 
they much rather the mass ones to be tending to their wounds instead of causing them. The mass ones write down the results and start preparing the next experiment. Look at this image! What emotion comes to your mind when you look at this? Fear. What comes, word comes to mind? I. Truly a fear into a seeing eye. Huh. I got a secret? There is movement on the top of the hole. The mass ones are opening the hatch and lowering something with a crane. Once the crane's platform lowered to the ground, a loud voice instructed them to take what's inside. The carefully wrapped package sits on top of the platform. The package seems to be full of food more than they could hope for. Not only that, but the food seems to be look delicious, judging by their reaction. But they have not forgotten what happened last time, and they are hesitant to make this same mistake twice. The masked ones point their guns at them, indicating them to hurry up. Wonder what should I do now? Can I get some hope? Yes. Span influence. I can't. Uh, yeah, I can still hit you with some hope. Karen is on the ground, trying to rest a little, despite not even having a rudimentary mattress. Her mind remembering her warm and cozy bed back at home. Karen starts thinking about her favorite chocolate. Dark chocolate with almonds and ice cream. How mad she would get with her father bought the wrong flavor. Her mentality was that if she was going to eat something that was not healthy, she was going to enjoy every second of those empty calories. She wanted those empty calories right now. She was tired to eat for survival only. It thought made her laugh. She finally did one of those cleansing diets that famous people and hippies talk so much about. She wouldn't recommend it. A warm shower. She wonders how many layers of dirt and dried blood she would remove in a warm shower. She started to think of how much she would enjoy each one of these things if she ever got out of here. She wanted to experience that. She will get out of this hole. She decided to do so. Yay, there we go. Is there another world for this frail dust? Too warm with life and be itself again? Something about me daily speaks. There must. And why should instinct nourish hopes in vain? Tis nature's prophecy that such will be. And everything seems struggling to explain. The closed, sealed volume of its mystery. Time wandering onward keeps its usual pace. As seeming anxious of eternity. To meet that calm and find a resting place. And the game crashed again! That's happened to me twice now. <laughs> 